praise. Give God a praise in this place. Give God a praise in this place. Give God a praise in this place. Welcome to the Excellent Church Georgia campus. I am one of your lead pastors, Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr. And you are here at our midweek encounter. Our midweek encounter. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being in the room. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, before we continue, because we already got started, before we continue, go ahead and like, tag, share, comment, whatever you need to do. Get somebody up in this area that you know that's going to be blessed by the, the message or the training, whatever we whatever God calls us to do tonight. If you know someone is going to be blessed, please, by all means, go ahead and like, tag them in this right now. Sit back, relax. Well, don't even sit back. We want you to stand up because we're about to get into praise and worship, okay? So wherever you are, go ahead and get Get up out your seat if you can and go ahead and, 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 and enjoy praise and worship with us. We're from our excelling church, our main campus in New York, our praise team. Without further ado, further ado, further ado, praise team. Let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us at the excelling church where we love to give God praise and your life's going to get better from here. So we want to encourage you to lift up his name wherever you might be even now. I encourage you to get ready for an awesome experience and encounter with God. So right there, once again, can we clap our hands with great expectancy for what God is getting ready to do? I don't know what you came for, but I come to encourage you that God is here. And when he's here, nothing else matters. We have the victory because of Jesus. We have the victory because of Jesus. Because he's alive and well, we are alive and well. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? So I want to encourage you to think about all that God has been and begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. God, you've been so faithful. God, you're still faithful. God, you're so good to us. So God, we owe you our worship today. God, we owe you our praise today. God, you're a covenant keeping God. And we bless your name, Jesus. And we give you the glory. And we give you the praise. God, we surrender to you even now. And God, we bless you, God. You're the, uh, hallelujah. You're the great and mighty God. You're the one that kept us day by day. So God, that's why we give you glory today. That's why we give you honor. Come on, you can tell your neighbor because there's people here. Tell your neighbor, even with their mask, say it's good to see you today. Come on, it's good to worship with you today. It's good to give them praise together. We're going to do this together. We're going to do this together. The song says, in the name of Jesus. See, the enemy's defeated because of his name. So you've got victory. We declare victory in your house. We declare victory wherever you are. Come on and put it together like this, y'all. Come on, put your hands on it like this. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, let's sing it together. Sing low. Oh, oh, oh.
thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you've come to set us free. Thank you that you're lighting up the darkness. You're fighting for us. Yes, Lord. Come on, it says, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out.
Oh God, oh God, we expect to move, Jesus, and we thank you for your glory with no resistance. Father, you are welcome. We say yes, Lord, yes. Our songs are rising in your direction. We say yes, Lord, yes. We will wait on you. We Yes to your will, Jesus. Yeah. God's gonna 
God, give the glory in this place. abundantly above all that we ask or think think about that above all that we ask or think that we ask or think isn't God amazing he can blow our minds oh he's such a great God Let's go ahead and begin with prayer. Yes, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for today. Glory to your name. You are worthy of all the praise, Father God. I thank you for the chains that are being broken. I'm going to start right there, Father God. I thank you for the healing and deliverance, Father God. I thank you that the enemy can no longer touch us. Hallelujah. 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 Let's raise a standard to our God. 
Yes, let's raise a standard. He is a great God. He is the most high God. He is a worthy God. He is a promise keeper. He is a way maker. He is everything that we need. He does everything that we ask or think of, Father God. Before we can ask, he already know because we thought of it. Thank you, Father, for knowing our minds. Thank you for knowing our hearts. Thank you for being the God of everything, Father. I thank you for being omnipresent. Hallelujah. I thank you that my issues are important to you. I thank you that my problems problems are being answered because of you. I thank you, Father, for being in the midst of the trouble, Father God. I thank you that you are my God. You are my God. You are my God. I'm proud to call you my God. I'm proud to call you my Father. I'm proud that I have the power that you have. I thank you that you have bestowed it upon me, and not just me, Father God, but every child you have in this place, Father God, every child you have in here, Father God. I thank you for the kingdom growing. I thank you for your presence being made. I thank you that the atmosphere has shifted. I thank you that you have shifted everybody's mindset. I thank you for the growth, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 We surrender to you, my God. We surrender to you. Hallelujah to you, my God. Hallelujah. I love you, God. I love you, God. You're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. You're so everything I need you to be. Oh, my God. You are glorious in all your way. We glorify you, Father. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I say hallelujah because you deserve that praise, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's raise a sound. Let's raise his praises up. Put the praises up. Have your praises go up to the heaven above so he can hear you. Hallelujah. Say your praises. Hallelujah. Surrender to the most high God. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll look crazy for you, God. I'll jump for you, God. I'll dance for you, God. I'll sing for you, God. I'll pray for you, God. I'll bless your name, God. Yes. Yes, God. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for everything you have been for me, for the things you brought me through. There is nobody like you. It is all because of you. Hallelujah. We thank you for the changes. We thank you for the 
thank you for the growth. We thank you for loving us before we loved ourselves. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Woo! We worship you, Father. We thank you for all of it. We thank you for the past. We thank you for the present. We thank you for the future. Father, I pray that the word coming forth, your people are ready to receive. Be ready to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. We praise and we thank you. Amen. Whew. Oh, God. I thank you for your presence being here. For your presence being in every seat, Father God. I thank you that even now the chains are being broken. I thank you, Father, right now that the mindsets that they have right now are being torn down. That we have peace. I thank you, Father, that people are being raised. I thank you, Father, for the growth and the breakening. I thank you, Father, for the strength. We bless you today. We bless you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I love to tell y'all how I feel. <clears throat> I feel so free. Yes. Amen. I feel so free. Amen. I can let it all out. Amen. I can scream. I can dance. I can run. I can jump. I can do everything and not be ashamed because of the God I serve. I don't care about nobody but the God I serve. So I don't have to be ashamed of anything that I do because I know my God is proud of me. And because I'm bold in it and because I'm doing it in his sight and not for my glory to be recognized, I thank God. Woo. I thank God. I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for the pastor that has been in his face for the word yes, daily. Oh, God. I thank you that he is our messenger. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Pastor Desmond. We bless you. Yes. Bless Amen. You, Whew. Lord. So I feel, I feel the heat. Mm -hmm. Do anybody else in the house feel the heat? You feel the heat, right? The AC's on 72. Oh, so we, okay. And you don't even have your blanket today. God bless. Amen. Amen. Let that Holy Spirit reside in you. Don't lose that feeling. It's okay to be hot. Not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Amen. 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 All right. Let me go ahead and begin with service. Now that I'm done crying, y'all in the spirit, amen. Thank God I didn't wear makeup. You see me, guys? I didn't wear makeup today. No lashes. All right. <clears throat> amen. I, <laughs> I love being transparent. I got to be myself, right? Amen? Amen? All right. So let's go ahead and begin with announcements. Oh, oh, first, welcome to the Excelling Church Georgia Campus. Yes, 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 yes. We are here. We are here. We are here, here, here. Yes. So, oh, I'm sorry. You guys can go ahead and take a seat right now. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to go and stand right here so you can see me. Can you see me? Probably too much. You don't want to see my tears. Let's, let me stand back a little bit. Is that better? I don't look that crazy. Okay, so let me go ahead. Welcome, welcome. So glad that each and every one of you are here. Thank you for being on live today. We hope that you are blessed, that you are blessed by, by worship, that you are blessed by the praises, that you are blessed by the prayer, and that you're blessed by the word that's coming forth. Amen, amen. amen. Woo! All right, so let's get to it. We have two events coming up, as always. You already know. You want to beat me to it? All right. <laughs> it's the 12 a.m. prayer pursuit. You don't want to miss that. It's always an awesome experience to, you know, just be on it. So make sure you're on there around 1150 or 1155 so you don't miss the word that has to come out. 
you don't want to miss it. You really don't. You don't never. You don't know what's going to happen. Is it going to be a full out prayer? Is it going to be a prophetic prayer or just whatever God has for him? Right. Well, for you guys and us. Amen. All right. And then we also have the Excelling Kids Monday morning prayer. Yes, we are still doing that as the kids are out of school. You know, thank God, but really, God, put them back. Amen. <laughs> put them back in school. Back in school. All three of them about to be out, out, out. Anyways, hallelujah. Praise God. We are now changing the time, not from 745 and 845, but to 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Hallelujah, right? Amen to me, because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I don't have to wake up at 7 o'clock. Yes. Because let me tell you, the struggle was so real, but I did it. God called me to do it, so I did it. And so summer is here, 9 a.m. will be the time. So if you know any kids, there's a Zoom link. If you don't know any kids, go have some, I guess. Um, <laughs> be merry, be merry, be fruitful and multiply. Okay, let me stop, let me stop, for real, for real. All right, so we have an announcement coming up. So on next, what is it called? Is it... um? What is it called? Next, this Sunday coming up. Well, next Sunday. Is it? It's this Sunday. I get mixed with this and next. and Okay, this Sunday coming up on the 30th, we have our youth, our youth service at 12 p.m. So make sure that you're there by 1130. We have a special guest that will be coming in and performing for us. Amen. He is young. Get ready. His name is his his rapper name is let me not butcher it. I'm sorry, Thais. Thais, I did it right. Hallelujah, praise God. He is coming into the building at the Double Tree Hotel. Don't miss it. It's gonna be a dynamic service, and we probably had the little ones doing a little something too. Amen. God bless. Right, you don't want to miss it. Make sure you put it on your calendar. Make sure you're there every Sunday. To be honest, because it's something powerful each time, and we are starting on time. So if you late, you might miss something, but come anyway. Amen. All right. Now, lastly, who is ready to sow into the kingdom? Yay! Yay! You get to sow. You get to sow. You get to sow. We all get to sow. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead. So there are three ways to give online, easy, fast, and secure. You can text to GROW. Remember GROW to 706 706- Five three five seven one two three, or you can cash up Excelling G A money sign Excelling G A, or you can do the Zelle account, which is the Excelling Church G A at Gmail dot com. We'll leave that on for a little bit. We don't want y'all to miss the opportunity to sow. Hallelujah! Or if you um would like to cash, well, eventually we'll uh we'll send you an address. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know what's wrong with me. I guess God gave me a funny spirit today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You are worthy, God. So let me go ahead and and bless over your seed today. Glory to God. So, Father, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for all that you have done in our lives. You are worthy to be praised. Father, we ask that every scene that was sown today will multiply in your name, Father God. We thank you for the growth that's happening. We thank you for things that are becoming that are coming to them, Father God, whether it's a new job, whether it's a promotion, Father God. We declare those things. Oh, yes, a promotion. Yes, God, we declare those things in the mighty name of Jesus. You are worthy of it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We believe all things that are coming they're coming from you father god and anything that the enemy has that to come to devour we rebuke that now in the mighty name of jesus you are worthy for all of it we bless you today hallelujah we bless you we bless you we love you and we trust you with all that we have in the mighty name of jesus so if you are ready pastor desmond will be coming with the word so get ready to receive amen i'm pastor jerica see you soon
let's give God a praise in this place. All right, if that was for me, it'd be okay. If that was for me, if y'all were praising me, it would be okay. But I want y'all to give God a praise in this place right now. I want you to praise the God that woke you up this morning. I want you to praise the God that protected you. I want to praise the God that is that is connecting you to, to, to life, to, to love. I want you to praise the God that has been giving you grace every single day you wake up in the morning, wherever you're going. I want, to, I want you to praise the God that has been blessing your family. I want you to praise our God that has been blessing your marriage. I want you to praise the God that has been blessing your children. I want you to praise our God, the one that's been blessing your employment, that has been giving you grace upon grace upon grace. I don't know about y'all, but the God I serve has been answering my prayers. He's been answering my prayers. I don't know what he's been doing about y'all, but he's been answering my prayers. So if you serve the same God I serve that has been answering your prayers, what I need for you to do right now is give God a praise like your life depended on it. Jesus, we thank you. My oh God, my God, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we thank you. 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 We thank you, we thank you, Jesus. And I have one lasting request before I get started. And this may turn service upside down tonight. If you believe in the God that I believe in, if you believe in the God that has been saving you, has been rescuing you, has been, has been blessing you, but most of all, if you believe the God that has torn down the traps, the ploys, what the enemy tried to do up until this week. And you are, I want you all to praise the same God that I praise because there's been a couple traps that the enemy tried to create this week for me. And our God broke down every single trap. He dismantled every single trap. So if you know the same God that I know, if you serve the same God that I serve, and the traps were dismantled in front of you, and he brought you through every single trap the enemy tried to set up for you, I want you to give God a miraculous, crazy, radical praise right now where you may be sitting, where you may be standing, right now in the mighty master's name of Jesus Christ. Give him a praise. 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 Yeah, 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 Jesus, we thank you. Mm. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Mm. Ah, God, we thank you. We thank you. Mm. Mm. Some of us in this atmosphere have passed the test. I hear in my spirit, you have passed the test. Mm. Mm. Some of us this week, God, allow the enemy to infiltrate your being because he wanted to see how you was going to respond. And God said, I was testing you this week. I have been testing you to see exactly how you're going to respond. And I just hear in my spirit right now, God says, congratulations. You have passed the test. 
and for that I am giving you great power. I am giving you great power, thus saith the Lord. My God. My God. Mm. Mm, I hear in my spirit, God says, because you did not complain like you used to complain. Because you did not complain like you used to complain but instead when you were tested you look toward the hills from whence cometh your help and you knew your help came from me thus saith the Lord and because of that you passed the test I don't know about y'all but I'm, I feel like running in this place right now You only knew the ways God tested me this week. Ah, my God, my God, my God. Mm, mm, mm. If you only realized, if you only understood, maybe you wasn't tested the way I was tested this week. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you were, and maybe, maybe you didn't. But I pray that you pass the test, like we passed the test today. Mm. And I just feel in the spirit, God is saying there's a new power coming. I just feel in the spirit, there's a new power coming. The light's, light's a little bit too bright. Can we get it just a, small, just, just a smidgen? I just hear the power. The power. The power. The power. There's a new exchange of power that I'm giving you. In this very moment, in this very atmosphere, thus saith the Lord. And he said, when the next trap tries to tries to become created, God says, you're going to not only sense it, but you're going to walk through it like it was never even created, thus saith the Lord. Mm. 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 God said, I am pleased. I am pleased. I am pleased with the way you conducted yourself during this test, the say of the Lord. Mm. And we thank you, Father. We give your name all the glory. We give your name all the honor. We give your name all the praise. Mm. 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 I even hear a spirit of boldness. Because you passed this test, not only am I giving you power, but I'm giving you even bigger boldness in the power that you have. That you're going to be able to open your mouth and speak things clearly in the atmosphere. The things that you used to think and you wish you could speak it out of your mouth. Now I'm making it comfortable for you to speak out of your mouth. I'm making it comfortable for you to speak it out of your mouth. Ah, Jesus, we thank you. And the gates of hell shall not prevail, thus saith the Lord. The very gates of hell shall not prevail, thus saith the Lord. Mm. 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 Now God says tonight is a celebration. It's a celebration. It's a celebration, thus saith the Lord. Mm. Mm. Power. Boldness. Power. Boldness. Thus saith the Lord. And we thank you, Father. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. 
you are worthy lord god we exalt your name on high thank you for the prophetic word right now in the mighty master's name of jesus christ we worship you right now and we receive it we accept it lord god and we believe it in your precious name in jesus name we pray amen ah god we thank you mm, victory 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 Mm, mm. Victory, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Ah, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for it. Mm. Bless your name, Jesus. 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 Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to the Excelling Church, Georgia campus. I am one of your lead pastors, Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr. You just finished hearing and seeing the our other lead pastor, my beautiful wife, Pastor Jerrica Peacock, as she began to assist in ushering in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you one thing, the Holy Ghost was already here. He was already in the place. He was just awaiting for someone to call him forth so he can do exactly what he has been commanded by God our Father to do, which is to be our advocate, which is to encourage us, which is to remind us of the power we have in this very atmosphere today, tonight. And we thank you for it. Mm. Well, tonight is our midweek encounter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've already had an encounter, haven't we? Yeah. Already had an encounter, haven't we? Mm, my God. So, welcome. You could have been anywhere. <laughs> you could have been tuning in anywhere tonight, but you decided to tune in tonight. And we want to thank you all. Uh, usually, before I get started, usually when we do our tithing and giving, we do a declaration, okay? Um, not going to do the declaration tonight, but I just want to let you know that usually when we do our giving, we declare some things. But my wife already prayed over your gift, so we are touching and agreeing that the things that we declared in our declaration are already coming to pass. So you have to believe the same things that we believe. But you walk in the gift and the seed that you sown. And you, once you prayed over your seed and you requested some things for God, believe that God is going to answer them. If it's in his will, it'll be answered. Amen. 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 So this is going to be a, a, a Bible study tonight. Um, so if you got your Bibles, if you got your notepads, if you got, you know, if you got something to write with, something to type with, or if you got your Bible on your phone, listen, follow me however you feel you can follow me tonight. Uh, God dropped this on my heart. Funny, God dropped this on my heart a few days ago this week. And uh, my wife will understand why when we get to the topic, why he dropped this on my heart. Uh, absolutely. So over the past few Bible studies, um, we, 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 we began to talk about, you know, we talked about your purpose. We talked about the and knowing and having the perspective and the power of prayer. Right. But when I began to create the topic for tonight, you know, and I was trying to figure out what to talk about, um, I realized that we haven't addressed one of the most, I believe, one of the most important things I think we need to have in order to realize and understand the power that we possess. 
and we even talked about you know faith and you know one a, a, a couple of couple of months ago uh one of the sermons was how big is your faith right but the one thing i realized that we have not talked about we have not dug into is a specific word and that word is trust trust so my topic for tonight's bible study is simply the word trust okay trust so quick open discussion you can comment in the comments block if you want to uh you don't have to do it on time you can sit back and think about it and type it later but i want you to sit back and ask yourself what does trust mean to you what exactly does trust mean to you as a person as a man as a woman as a father as a mother as a as a husband as a wife you know co-worker whatever what does trust mean to you right and then my second question i would like to also ask you know just 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 to kind of give you some thought is trusting easy or a challenge for you well y'all said no quick and you said challenge extremely quicker right so if it is a challenge for you why why is trust a challenge for you why is it so thinking about those two questions okay what does trust mean to you and is trust easy or a challenge and why is it was well, actually three questions if you think about it I, I i this evening we're going to dive into this challenge because i truly believe that trust is a challenge for everyone trusting understanding what trust is all about the you know the dynamic of it it's, it's a challenge for everyone right and not only is it a challenge for us as as a man or a woman but I truly believe also trust is a challenge as children of God. Okay? So, you know, I had to look up trust, and you know me, I, I, I tend to dive and do some little bit of research, and I looked up the word trust in the Webster's Dictionary, right? And so in the Webster's Dictionary, it says it's a firm belief in the character, strength, truth. I mean, I'm sorry. It's a firm belief in the character, strength, or truth of someone or something. Or a person or thing in which confidence is placed. Okay? So a firm belief in the character, strength, or truth of something or someone. Or a person or thing in which confidence is placed. Then, you know, I had to look it up in the biblical dictionary when it came down to trust, right? So I looked it up and what I, what I was able to kind of, I was able to kind of get from it and, you know, take out of it was confidence. A reliance or resting in the mind on the integrity, I'm sorry, confidence, a, re, a reliance or resting of the mind on the integrity, justice, friendship, or other sound principle of another person. Say that again. Confidence, a reliance or resting of the mind on the integrity, I think it says veracity, justice, friendship, or other sound principle of another person so when i do all this like i said we're in a bible study you know this is our midweek we were doing bible study i had to look up i had to get our reference scripture for this bible study so what better scripture when we dealing with trust than to talk about this particular passage of scripture going to proverbs proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 6 all right Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. That was in a New International Version. Okay? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding, and in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight now in the message text i like how, we, how how i read it in the message text as well it says trust god from the bottom of your heart don't try to figure out everything on your own listen for god's voice in everything you do everywhere you go he's the one who will keep you on track 
Listen to God's voice. In everything you do, everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. So when I looked at the scripture again, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I have a firm, so I, I feel when I look at trust and I grab everything that I read, I grabbed the dictionary meaning, the biblical meaning, and I looked at the, the passage of scripture. And so I kind of created trust meaning in my, you know, I kind of created my own meaning of trust, right? And so I, I felt that is having a firm belief in the character of the Lord with all of your being and do not try to understand things using your human mind. And, and, and me, that, that, that's what I feel trust is when it comes down to the, 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 the spiritual realm of trust. Have a firm belief in the character of the Lord with all of your being and do not try to understand all things using your human mind. So what's the problem, men and women of God? Why, why can't we trust God? Why can't we trust God? If dealing with trust, we're talking about trusting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why can't we trust God? I mean, I, I can think of, you know, some some things I've heard, you know, things get so hard, Pastor Des. Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, Pastor, God's not moving fast enough. I, I can't trust God because I must understand why I'm dealing with this. I have to understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. I'm a logical thinker, Pastor Des, so I mean, I need to know, okay? Uh, I like to have control over my life and affairs. At least in that case, I know and can deal with what may come my way. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Let me read that one more time. I, I like to have control over my life and my affairs. At least in that case, I know and can deal with what comes my way. Or, man, it's hard for me, Pastor Des, to trust because I've been hurt so many times before by people I can see or touch. So trying to trust someone I can't see or touch is even a bigger problem. I've been hurt by people I can literally look at and touch. So you're trying to tell me I need to trust somebody I haven't seen or cannot touch with my own hands, but you want me to trust God? Mm. So this is the reason why when I hear those excuses, when I ask about people trusting God or why don't you trust in God in this certain circumstance or why don't you trust in God in, in, your, in your valley right now? You know, and I hear those excuses. God literally dropped this in my being when I was typing this stuff. He said, son, the reason why it's hard for my people to trust me simply is because we are looking at God naturally. The reason why it's so hard for us as men and women of God to trust God is because we have been viewing God naturally. Oh, what, 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 what do you mean by that, Pastor Des? We put God in the same category as we put people. We put God in the same category as we put people. I don't understand why we do that. I don't understand why. This, this, man, this, this man created you. But you put him in the same category as someone else he created. The, the, you, 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 you get my drift? You, you, see, you, you see where I'm going with this? You see where God is taking us tonight? Mm. But let me, let, me, let me get you, let me drag you to a scripture when we have people who either... Because when we start putting God in the same category as men or women, when it comes down to us not trusting, that means we, we trust man more than we trust God. Because we've already put God in the same category. We're looking at God as a natural being. We're not looking at God as Elohim. We're not looking at God as Jehovah Jireh. We're looking at God as Desmond. We're looking at God as my ex-wife. I'm, I'm in somebody's kitchen today. We're looking at God as that, that, that boss. We're looking at God as that employee that, 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 that betrayed me. 
That's, that's how we're looking at God. But when I look in that and I say, God, what, what, what happens to us if we put man in front of you? And let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 7. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version, okay? Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 7. Check this out now. It says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited but blessed is the man who trusts in the lord and whose hope is in the lord so let me break that down in the message text cursed is the strong who depends on mere humans cursed is the strong who depends on mere humans who thinks he can make it on muscle alone and sets God aside as dead weight. Y'all better be hearing me tonight. Y'all better be hearing me tonight. He's like a tumbleweed on a prairie out of touch with the good earth. He lives rootless and aimless in the land where nothing grows. But blessed is the man who trusts me, God, the woman who sticks with God. So, 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 uh, I'm trying to figure this out. You, you, it, God is saying right now, I mean, if, if you're, if you are trusting in man more than you trust in me, cursed be you. Cursed be you. Put your trust in God, not human beings. But see, Des, I'm not putting myself, I'm not, I'm not putting, I'm not trusting in human beings more than I trust in God. When you're looking at God through your natural eye, you've already compared him. So he's on the same wavelength. So you have officially made God a human. You officially made him a human when you put him on the same wavelength as, your, as, as the people to your left and your right. So now you are trusting in man more than you trust in God, the supreme being. Mm. How can you say you have faith in God but not trust God? How can you say you have faith as a man and woman of God but you don't trust God? How? But yet now you wonder why your faith is so weak. You wonder why when you, have, when you feel that you got faith in something, but it, it, it doesn't go hand in hand, man and woman. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense if you sit there and say, I, I, I have faith in God, but, but you're still not trusting that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. But you're saying, I have faith in God. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't go together at all. Why is our trust in God in certain things strong while weaker in other things? So, so what, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Uh, so let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me backtrack. We trust in God. Our trust in God is a lot more stronger in certain areas of our lives than it is in other areas of our lives. Okay? I, I, I trust God. I trust God that your word is going to accomplish exactly what it's set out to do. I trust that. You say that in your word, so I'm going to say that. I trust that your word will accomplish exactly what it's set out to do, God. I trust you, God, but I trust that you say you're going to do what you said you were going to do, God, but uh, it's just sticky right now. I, 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 uh, it's easy for someone to tell me to trust God when it seems like their life is on cloud nine and my life is on bottom zero. It's, it's real easy for somebody to smile in my face and say, hey, you know, you need to trust in God because God, God is the provider. He's going to do what he says he's going to do. And you look at the person saying that and they look like they got life all together. But my life is falling apart. But you want me to trust God. But aren't you a man, a woman of God? Aren't you saved? 
didn't he save you? When he saves you, didn't he give you something? And then you give you something like called an advocate or comforter to help encourage you when you're going through these hard times. But you have the nerve to sit here and say you can't trust God to fulfill what he said he's going to fulfill. Mm. Or you got faith in God, but ah, things is kind of sticky right now, God. I, 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 I trust you. I trust you, but I'm looking at this bank account. Ah, I'm in somebody's house tonight. I, I, I trust you, God. I, I, I do, you know, but I, 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 my, my card, my credit card is about three to four hundred dollars away from being maxed out. But, 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 but I trust you, God. I, I trust you. I do. I do. We don't know how to trust God when we're going through difficult times. I'm just going to be plain and honest with you. And, and, and let's be honest, my difficult times may not be the same as your difficult times, okay? My difficult times may not, uh, may not it, it may be a little bit more weight on me. I may be able to bear a few more things than you can be able to bear, okay? Uh, but each person's difficult time is their difficult time, right? Right? Can we, can we get that? So... I, I, I've already laid the foundation for you. I've already told you that, okay, our trust in God is kind of flaky right now, okay? But I would be remiss if I didn't at least help you out when you're dealing with your trust in God and you're dealing with that one word, trust, and dealing with it. How do you get it stronger? How, how, am, I, how am I to trust God in these difficult times? So I'm going to give you a little bit of things that you can help yourself out with. Because you're not always going to be online viewing us. You're not always going to be in church and our in-person services on Sundays. You're not always going to be around this body of believers. You're going to be on your own. You're going to be doing things Monday through Friday, right? So I want to give you a little bit of things that, you, that can probably help you out. So when your trust is, is flaky, first thing, seek trust in Scripture, Mm. How many of us, when we're going through these hard times and we, our trust in God is kind of flaky, how many of us are picking up a Bible and reading Scripture? How many of us are opening up the book that he gave us, which is a blueprint of our life and how we are to move as Christians? How many of us pick up a Bible and say, you know what, God, I, my, my trust is getting there. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't like the way I'm feeling, but so let me pick up this Bible. Let me start reading. Because the Bible has concrete record of God responding in difficult times. The Bible has concrete record of God responding during people's difficult times. The scriptures free you from what I call unrealistic think traps. Hear me, hear me. The scriptures free you from unrealistic think traps that guide you into worry. It frees you from that. Wait, what do you mean by that, Pastor Des? Hey, hey, I, I mean, if I, if I just open up the Bible, if I just told you that there's stories in the Bible that a God is responding to people during their difficult times. And I'm telling you that if you begin to read the scriptures, what it does is it frees you from these unnecessary think traps. Unrealistic. What is unrealistic, Pastor Des? Uh, God, I trust you, but that's a think trap. That's unrealistic. If you trust God to do something, there should be no but. If you have faith and trust God to do what he said he's going to do, there should be no but at all. Now, when it comes down to man, you may have a but. A, a few of them. You may, hey, I, I don't trust you. Or I trust you but a certain extent. I got to keep you at bay. Because you've done some things that I have to make sure that I protect myself. But if we're thinking about that, so we get that when it comes down to people. But why we put God in that same category? I trust you, God, but you're moving a little bit too slow. So I'm going to keep you at bay until I feel comfortable enough to trust you. Pastor there, whoa, whoa, whoa now, Pastor there. I, I ain't never said that. 
You don't have to say it. You're doing it. You're doing it in your actions. Actions speak loud. Thank you, Shaquilla. Actions speak louder than words. Louder than words. Find you a strong foundation of scripture to stand on. Especially when you are feeling uncertain. Find a good passage of scriptures. OK, I mean, you can look it online. There's, you can Google and there's a list. If you're feeling this, read that. If you're feeling this, read that. If you're feeling that, read that. If you're feeling this, read that. And I'm pretty sure a bunch of us have posted that on Facebook. I'm pretty sure a bunch of us have have copied it and we have it somewhere in our house. But we don't use it. Because I'm pretty sure everybody in this room and those of you that are watching have gone through uncertain times. When you're going through those uncertain times, have you done anything I said just within the first exercise? Have you sought out the scripture? Because I'm, I guarantee you one scripture I can give you that you can stand on right now when you're going through these uncertain times or you feel as like your trust is not there where it needs to be. It's first John four and four. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So how in the devil am I putting God in the same position as the people of the world? When he already said greater is he that is in me. Mm. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. So that's the first step. Second step. Confess your unbelief. Confess your unbelief. Be honest. God is your father. God, God is not this person that's sitting up high and mighty and cocky and don't feel like he don't, you know, you feels like you, you, you below him. And he can't answer your prayers. And he can't, he can't come to your safety. He can't be your savior. He can't, exactly. Thank you, Pastor Derek. He can't be your daddy. Mm, confess your unbelief. Allow, and then, and then this is the thing. Because cause, cause I know you're going to sit there and say, well, Pastor Dez, wasn't that me confessing my unbelief by saying, God, I trust you, but such, 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 such. Yeah, but see, this is the problem. This is what, this is the difference between you saying that and you confessing your unbelief. You have to allow God to remind you who he really is and what he has promised you. Allow God to remind you. See, a lot of us sit there and say, God, I trust you, but man, this, this is just hard and I don't think I can do it. Once you say you don't think you can do it, you've actually, uh, you've actually blocked the Holy Spirit from speaking it to you. Because you've already spoken into the atmosphere what you cannot do. And we already know there's death and life and the power of your what? Tongue. So you've already spoken it. You've already spoken it out into the atmosphere. And so the Holy Ghost is like, I right when I was about to encourage you because you forget who I am to you. I'm your advocate. I go, I, I'm speaking on your behalf. I'm here to comfort you in times of uncertainty. But if you're speaking it into the atmosphere that no one can help you, you've already cut, you, 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 you've caught, you, you've messed me up. You, you, you shackled my own hands. It's okay to acknowledge how good and true he is. But you can also tell him where it is difficult for you to believe. Yes. What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about, Pastor? Yes. It's all right to acknowledge. We acknowledge how good God is every single day of the week. But you can also let God where, hey, it's difficult for me right now, God. It's difficult for me to believe right now. It's difficult. You see the difference in, 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 in sentence structure? God, I trust you, but things are just hard right now, so I don't, think I'm a, I don't think I'm able to do this. Other than saying, God, I trust you. I need, I, need for, I need for you to help me believe in what I trust you to do. You see the difference? 
Yes. Thank you, Lonnie. She all up. Y'all are all up in my dog on notes all night tonight. Pastor Jerrica is. Shaquilla is. Lonnie is. Y'all just all up in my. But trust me, that just lets me know we in the right vein. And that lets me know the Holy Ghost has already been here because he's speaking it before he says it. And I know, Faith, you done already said a few things. You just don't want to speak it out loud. But I'm going to go to an actual scripture that that supports what we're saying. Mark chapter 9, verses 21 through 24. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis of this area. What's going on is there is a boy, a young boy that has been demon possessed. A young boy that's been demon possessed. And uh, Jesus comes along the scene and he asks, and it says in 21, it says, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, the father answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. So then Jesus said, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe. I do believe what you can do, Jesus. I do believe my son can be healed. But look at what I'm looking at every single day. I see these demons taking over every single day. I see these demons trying to kill my son every single day because he's being thrown into fire and then he's being thrown into water, almost drowning. So, but I do believe you, Jesus. I do believe that you can heal. I do believe you can cast these demons out. But I need you to help my unbelief right now. Help me believe what I know I should be believing in you. It says Jesus helped the father's unbelief by healing his demon-possessed son. All it takes is for you to speak to your father. Speak to your father. See, some of us have put, in which we should, because he is almighty. He is the, the first, the last, the beginning, the end. He is Alpha and Omega. He is almighty God. But some of us has taken those names and, and it's become a, a, it's become a crutch. Because we, we, when we say those names, all we see is like this supreme being. And it's like, I can't talk to that guy because I'm, I'm all the way down here. And I need, to get him, I need to get a few levels in the game before I'm able to, before I'm able to talk to him. I, 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 need to, I need to grow in my, in my walk with God before I feel I'm at the position where I can actually talk to God like this man is talking to Jesus. Because, you know, they say he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He, he, he's Jehovah Nisi. You know, he, he's Jehovah Jireh. He, 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 he's Yahweh. I hear that word Yahweh. I'm like, let me get out the way. <laughs> let me move. And see, that's been the mentality because we feel as though we've put, and I'm sorry, we, in, in certain churches, we put pastors and bishops and apostles, we put them on such high pedestals. Our people that are just joining the ministry, our people that are just joining the church getting saved, feel that's how they should be looking at Jesus. Because if I'm looking at this high, if I'm looking at this pastor, and this pastor's on a stage that's 50 feet up in the air, and I'm all the way down here, and I'm looking up at him. And then when, ter when service is over, I can't even talk to him because I have to get through all these other people prior to even having a relationship or even, matter of fact, or I got to schedule an appointment, and the appointment is going to be three or four months from now. I'm looking at that being a relationship with Jesus because he's the closest one, I think, to Jesus. So if he's the closest one to Jesus that I feel, and he's all the way up there, and he's hard to get in contact, hard to reach out and touch or even speak to, how in the world, how in the world am I going to be able to talk to Jesus? How in the world am I going to be able to talk to God who is my father? How? Mm. 
Let me rebuke that think trap right now in Jesus' name. You have God the Father right next to you. You can speak to him whenever you need to speak to him. You don't need an appointment. He's not going to respond to you in three or four months. If you call on him, he'll listen. Now, certain things you may want to ask for may take you three and four months for the prayer to be answered because he's watching to see how you conduct yourself during the wait period. But he hears you. See, that's the difference. But see, think about that. If I'm saying that to you, but we turn around and put God in the same position as that pastor all the way up on that stage that I can't reach out and touch. We see the problem with that now. Mm. Now, let's go to another area. How you can build your trust. First, trust God and do. First, trust God and do what he calls you to do. Mm. First, you got to trust God and do what he has called you to do. Then he will give you the desires of your heart. So what you mean by that, Pastor? That I, 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 okay, you, 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 you can you can sit there and say, God, I want you to do this, God. I'm trusting you to do this, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, uh, but have you been walking the walk you're supposed to be walking? Have you have you accepted the call of God on your life? Have you accepted the call of God on your life? And if you haven't accepted the call of God in your life, why are you sitting here complaining why God is not answering your prayers? Mm. If you haven't accepted the call of God on your life, it makes sense why you can't trust him because you're not using him to be your Lord. You haven't allowed him to be your Lord. You've allowed him to be your savior. See, that's the difference. It's an even exchange. If God is saving you, that means you have to follow the person who saved you. If this person saved you from death, hell, <laughs> and the grave for a lot of us, then that means you have to follow the person who saved you. That means now your attention is on him. And now you have to listen to what he's calling you to do. But then we, we don't want to do what God has called us to do. And then we get in our wilderness and we're in that wilderness and we're like, God, come on now. I got faith in you. I, I'm trusting. But you know what's going on? You I, 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 I'm still in this. I'm, I'm still in this in this hell in this hell hole. God is saying you're in the hell hole because you haven't allowed. Mm, let me let it alone. Let me let it alone. I'm, I'm going too deep. I'm going too deep. I'm going too deep. I'm going too deep. Mm. I'm going too deep. You're in the hell hole because you've allowed hell to hold you captive. Because you haven't allowed God or you haven't allowed you haven't allowed yourself to accept the calling on your life. So now hell is holding you captive. That's why you're in the hell hole. Because you haven't accepted the call of God on your life. Now I'm not saying you have, I'm, Pastor, does that mean I got to, I, I, I'm not supposed to be a minister. I'm not supposed to be a pastor. I'm not saying that. The call of God in your life can just be a man of God walking the way a man of God or woman of God should walk. That could be the call of God in your life. Or it could be per someone who does evangelize. You don't have to have a mic to evangelize. You can talk and share the gospel of Jesus Christ at your job. But a lot of us haven't accepted the call of God on our lives. And then we wonder why it's taking God so long to move. How you want God to move and you ain't moving where God's supposed to be telling you to move. But you want God to stop what he doing and save you and rescue you. But you haven't, uh, you haven't obeyed God and what he wants you to do for him. Because what you're doing for God is helping increase and secure the kingdom. So if I'm telling you to do something to help build and secure the kingdom and you decide not to do it, what you're doing now is you've put the work and the responsibility and you put the, the, the slack on someone else to complete. And now it's harder to build the kingdom. 
Ah! Ah, it's hard. Because you haven't accepted, but yet you're calling on God. God, please fix my unbelief. God is like, you're not even believing what I'm calling you to do. So first fix, fix your, fix your laziness. Fix your disapproval of what I've called you to be. Stop saying you cannot do that and rest and trust in me to provide you what you need to do in order to do it. Hmm. How can you fully trust God if you haven't begun to accept his calling for your life? Psalms 37, 3 and 5, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Verse 5, I like it. It says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. Hmm. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Verse 5 says, commit everything you do. To the Lord. Everything you do. Commit everything that you do to the Lord. That means the way we're talking. That means the way we're thinking. That means the way we're walking. That means what we're listening to. That means what we allow ourselves to be a part of. That means what areas we walk into. What areas we're walking into, what we allow to be heard, what we allow to be talked amongst us. See, let me tell you something. If you walk into an atmosphere and people don't get right, and what I mean by getting right, they watch what they say because they're around you, or they get quiet when you show up, chances are you got the Holy Ghost, baby. Chances are there's something on you that they don't like. They don't like. So they got, to, they got to get right. Or chances are they talking about you because there's something about you they can't understand. And what they can't understand because they're looking at it through their natural eye, they can't understand that you have an advocate guiding you every single day of your week. Every single day you wake up to the time you go to bed, you have an advocate sitting there letting you know when to speak, when not to speak. But see, you have to trust in God. All that lies with trust. All of that lies in trust. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And when, why, why do you think it said the heart? Why do you think it said the heart? It, it could have said, it could have said trust in, the, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. It could have said trust in the Lord with everything you think about. It could have said trust in the Lord with everything you do. But why do you think it said trust in the Lord with all your heart? Well, I, I got it. I, it just it hit me while, while I was asking that question. The human heart. That's like the central system of the body. It, it, it has to pump, right? It, it sends oxygen. It helps the blood flow. If the heart stops, the entire body stops. Right? So if my, if my arm breaks, I'm still operational. If both arms break, I'm still operational. If my leg breaks, I'm still pretty operational. I may not be able to do a lot, but I can think a lot. If both or all four of my limbs just, just completely collapse, guess what? I can speak. I can think. I can breathe. Right? But when my heart stops, there's no more function. 
I'm officially dead. So when we're trusting in God with everything that is operational in our being, we get it now? That means everything has to work according to the heart. Everything has to move according to the operational purposes of the heart pumping. So if I'm trusting in God with the center system of my body, that means everything has to come under subjection. It doesn't say trust in the Lord with your arm. Because guess what? I have the rest of the body that don't have to trust in God. But see, some of us are doing that. Some of us are saying, I trust in the Lord with all of my arm. And I'm going to lean somewhat to the rest of my body. Because I trust in you, God. This is my trust. And some of us are there right now. Some of us as men and women of God are there right now. We got faith in God. I, I got faith in you, God. It's on this arm. Because your faith goes from your shoulder to your, to your elbow bend, and then that trust goes from the elbow bend to your fingertips. So your faith and trust is right here. But you don't trust in God with all of your heart because you're in your wilderness. You don't trust God in the, with all your heart because you're dealing with what you're dealing right now. But I guarantee you, if you pick up the word, I guarantee you, if you begin to read your Bible, I guarantee you, if you take that, if you take that, if that snapshot of scriptures you posted on your Facebook page, your Instagram page, you pull it down, you actually begin to read those scriptures, something bubbles up inside of you. You begin to look at things in a different light. You begin to approach things in a whole different type of posture. Why? Because you continuously say to yourself, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So it's going to be a lot easier for me to trust you, God, because you're the greater that's in me. So I can lean toward that area. I can lean toward that scripture and I can push forward. I can do exact. I can trust in you, God, because you said in your word, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to my own understanding. So when we say that, but that's us leaning to our own understanding. When we say, God, I trust you, but we're leaning to our own understanding. And God is saying, I've, I've surpassed human understanding. I created human understanding. So if I created human understanding and I'm telling you to trust in the creator that created human understanding, why are you putting him in a category with human understanding? Why? I trust you, God, but, you know, I just the, 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 the bank account. God is saying, why are you trusting in a bank account? Because when we say that, but that's who we're really trusting in. I trust you, God, but my marriage. God says, why are you trusting in the marriage? I didn't, the, the trust, the, the marriage didn't put the marriage together. You took a, a vow before me for, for, for better or for worse. I, I, I trust you, God, but this job, why are you trusting in the job and not in me? I trust you, God, but my kids, boy, whoo. Why are you trusting in the kids, which was an inheritance from me to begin with? Y'all better hear me tonight. Y'all better hear me tonight. Y'all better hear me tonight. God, I trust you, but this house, it's just going from one end to the other. It's just God is saying, why are you trusting in something that I gave man the, in the importance and the skill to build? But you're trusting in a house. You're trusting in something materialistic. You're trusting in something that if I were to come down and the rapture took place, you wasn't leaving with the house. You come before me before judgment. But you're trusting in a job. You're trusting in a house. You're trusting in money. You're trusting in what you can see. Oh, you're trusting in things which you can see with your natural eye. And you have yet to click and turn on that spiritual eye. You have yet to turn the spiritual eye on. And God is saying, cut on that spiritual eye. Because trust and believe, when that eye is turned on, 
your whole outlook on this natural life on this earth changes. And then people begin to look at you strange. How in the world, Jeremy, are you walking around laughing and joking, but you living from paycheck to paycheck? How in the world, Faith, are you and Ron able to laugh and joke and worship God and your house is falling? How in the world, Lonnie, are you able to do what you're doing and you can't seem to find, you can't, you, you always having an issue with your job or you're having an issue with this or you're having an issue with that? Desmond, how in the world, how in the world can you sit there and laugh and joke when you got people talking about your ministry when your back is turned? How are you able to move freely like you're moving, Pastor Desmond? How are you able to move freely like you're moving and smiling like you're smiling, but yet you told me that you don't have no money in the bank? How are you able to function and you sitting there waiting on paper? How are you sitting able to function, Pastor Desmond, and you put so much money into the ministry? When you should have used that money to help out with your own issues. Mm. See, because I believe in a God. And what I'm doing is I'm sowing into what God has called me to do. See, a lot of us haven't stepped into our calling yet. So it's hard to figure out what God is doing in our lives because we are still fighting our calling. But why do you feel, why, why do you honestly think that people are smiling the way they're smiling and doing the things that they're doing? Because they're trusting in God. Their trust in God is greater than their circumstance. Their trust in God is greater than the what if. Their trust in God is greater than can't. Their trust in God is greater than but. How important is for how important is it for you to trust in God? Let's not compare God to your trust in people. Lean not to your own understanding. And last but not least, men and women of God, in this very season, in this very hour, and I come to a close. In this very season and in this very hour, it's time for us to stop trying and start trusting. It is time for us to stop trying and start trusting. Stop trying to figure out what is happening from day to day and start trusting that God is going to guide you from day to day. Stop trying to figure out things that God has already called in your life. Stop trying to figure out how things are going to happen. Stop trying to figure out how these things are coming to pass when God has already said they're coming to pass. Trust that God is going to do exactly what his word said. And it's not going to come back to him void. Some of us are at a place right now where it's hard. And I get it. It's hard. I've trusted, Pastor Desmond. I, I'm trusting but, but, but you got to understand it's hard to trust when I'm seeing this every single day. It's hard to trust, Pastor Desmond, when, when one day we're at a good space and the next day we're at each other's throat. It's hard to trust, Pastor Desmond, when, 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 when I, 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 I can see myself getting better, but yet something pulls me right back down. I, I can see, I, I understand when you're talking about trusting Pastor Desmond, but it's, it's hard to trust when, when I, I see everybody around me living. Everybody around me seems like their life is just awesome. And I'm coming home to shambles. I'm coming home to shrapnel from an explosion that took place in my home emotionally about three hours ago. It's hard for me to trust, Pastor Desmond. I'm trying to trust. This is what you do when you get to that place of uncertainty, men and women of God. You ask God to prove what you're trusting in. Ask God to show you and help you with your disbelief. Ask God to show you and help you with your distrust. He's your father. We all know we talk to our mothers and fathers. We don't trust something. We walk to them and tell them. Our mothers and fathers weren't unapproachable. They may seem that way, 
But guess what? You could have walked right up to them and asked them a question. Ah, oh, Jesus, you may not like the answer. And don't deter your trust in God because the answer wasn't what you wanted it to be. Don't change or, or, or don't mess up or don't change your, your, what I would say, your temperature or don't change your trust and your strength in God. Your strength and your trust in God because you wanted something to happen this way and it happened a totally different, an opposite way. See, some of us are in that position now where, God, I wanted this promotion. I wanted to be here. You know I had the blueprint set out. There was a reason why I needed this promotion. I needed this position. I needed this money. You know why. But you have me still sitting in this place. And you want me to continue to trust you, God. God is saying I have you in that place because I'm saving you. Mm. Mm. God has, I, I, I have you in that place still because I'm saving you from what's happening in that atmosphere right now. So be very, very careful, men and women of God, when we complain to God about our current situation. Because we don't know what God is saving us from. He turned that Savior mode. And he's saving us from a present danger. We always pray about save us from clear and present danger or near and future danger. But when he's saving you from the near and, and near and future danger, we get upset. And our trust in God begins to deplete. Mm. Why haven't I moved into that house yet, God? Why am I still in the place I am right now? God is saying, if you just trust in me, you don't even know I'm trying to set you up for something greater than what you think you need. But if you just trust in me, thus saith the Lord. Trust in me. Trust in me. Don't trust in what you see. Trust in what you don't see. Don't trust in what you see. God is saying trust in what you don't see. Because faith is the evidence of things what? And the... And the, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so if you got faith obviously you're trusting in something that you cannot see you're trusting in God to do what you haven't seen him do but he said he's going to do we gotta trust God regardless of the situation or the circumstance we're in right now and while we're trusting in God, there's work we have to do. Ah, there's work we have to do while we're trusting in God. We can't sit on our rear point of contact, our behinds, and wait for God to drop it in our lap. Because God is still watching how you move. He's watching how you conduct yourself as you wait. He's watching to see how strong your trust is in Him as you wait. Now is the time for you to be patient, thus saith the Lord. Mm. It's time for us to stop trying and start trusting. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity tonight, Father God. We thank you for using your man and woman servant, Father God, for your glory. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that the words of my mouth have been pleasing in your ears, Lord God that your men and women in God have been blessed in more ways than one. Father, I pray right now that every person that is viewing tonight, Lord God, they are empowered and their trust in you is strengthening even as we speak. And Lord God, I thank you for every man and woman in this room with us tonight. And Father, I pray that the trust in you, Lord God, begin to strengthen even more. And Father, I pray that if they have disbelief, Lord God, Father, I pray right now that you help them with their disbelief. Remind them who you are. Remind them what you've done for them in the past. Give them an ease and a peace right now in this atmosphere. And we thank you for what you're doing. 
we thank you for what you've done and we're lord we're so excited lord god for what you're still about to do in our lives right now and father god we trust you with every fiber in our natural and spiritual being in the name of jesus have your way in our lives right now father not our will but your will be done father we vow we won't sit we won't sit or stand stagnant father as you are working in us and through us father we pray right now that we accept the calling whatever that may be lord god in your kingdom we accept the calling on our lives right now and father god we thank you for the calling blossoming in our lives in us and through us we thank you for it right now we praise you for it right now and father god i thank you thank you for showing us a clearer understanding about trust thank you for showing us a clearer understanding about trust and father god we vow to trust in you regardless of whether our circumstances are great or our circumstances are poor we will still trust in you and lean not to our own understanding we won't logically think about you because you're not a logical god <laughs> you don't move in logic mm. You don't move in logic because we serve an impot we serve a god that does things impossible so if it's impossible that means it doesn't it doesn't equal logical thinking so father god we thank you for serving you who do things impossible we thank you that be that man's inopportunity is your opportunity and father god we 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 say we, we apologize Father God, we repent for our disbelief in you. We repent for our, our mistrust in you, the, the, us not, not understanding or not wanting to trust you wholeheartedly. Father, we pray and ask for your forgiveness right now. And Lord, we pray right now that you impart on us a different view, a new found, refreshed anointing and rejuvenation in you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke every think trap the enemy may cause right now. We rebuke every think trap that his imps are trying to plot even as we pray right now we are we are decreeing and declaring the dismantling of the traps right now in jesus name and we thank you for it we praise you for it we worship you for it all these things we believe in your name in jesus name we pray and god's people say amen 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 give god a praise in this place right now thank you father thank you at this time if if you feel that you know you don't know the god that we that we've been talking about and you want to build this trust and you want to give your life to god this after this evening or you feel that you've you've gone away from that trust in god and you want to rebuild that trust but in order to rebuild this trust and understand how we trust the god that we trust you got to have a relationship you can't trust nobody if you don't have a relationship with them. ah you cannot trust someone if you don't have a relationship with them. and you cannot build on trust if that person hasn't already proved to you that they can be trusted and let me tell you something about our god our father he has proven time and time and time again that he can be trusted in more ways than one so if that is you if you feel that you want to give your life to god tonight you can if you want to rededicate your life to christ tonight you can all you have to do is just repeat after me just touch and agree and repeat these simple words after me say father god you know my life and you know how i lived it father i ask you right now that you forgive me of my sins I repent father Lord you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins but rose on the third day with all power in his hands I am saved so father I believe that tonight I vow to you, Lord God, that I will live for you, I will trust in you, and I will believe in you. Thank you for saving me, God. 
Thank you, Lord, for welcoming me to the kingdom of believers. And I thank you right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 If you would like to also be a partner, if you'd like to be a partner of the Excelling Church Georgia campus, listen, you can do that right now. Our media team is dropping down the actual form. If you want to partner up with us, if you want to be a part of the Excelling Church Georgia campus, you can do that as well. If you want prayer, if you desire prayer right now, you can also fill out the form that the media team is dropping in the comment section. And we can either reach out to you or if you don't feel what you want to be reached out to, we can just put you on our prayer wall and we can pray for you. Amen. Because we truly believe that things are changing in this atmosphere. And we pray for you. And one thing you know about the Excellent Church Georgia campus, we are a team of intercessors. And we pray on behalf of not only ourselves, but the ministry and those who need prayer. So I truly believe and I affirm that when we come together as, as brothers and sisters in, in intercession, things happen in the atmosphere. They happen. If, even if we don't meet each other and we just pray, things end up happening because we are a strong team of intercessors. So if you need that prayer, go ahead and fill out that form. Amen. 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 So that's all I have tonight. I pray that you all were blessed in more ways than one. Um, don't forget this Sunday. This Sunday, this Sunday, if you are in the Tri-City area, Columbus, if you're in the Phoenix City, Alabama area, please be at the Double Tree Hotel this Sunday at 12 noon. We are having Youth Sunday. Youth Sunday this Sunday, okay? Our doors open at 1130. So if you want to come early, get a good seat, please do so because trust and believe, you know, you never know what you get in the Excelling Church. It's either maybe packed, or you may have a lot of room, or you may, you may be standing room only. But I truly believe that this Sunday is going to be totally different. It's going to be something. You're going to leave with something. Amen? Amen. We actually have a, a special guest. His name is Taiz. He's coming through to minister to us and, and rap. And it's going to be amazing. He's, he's an amazing artist, and he loves God. He loves God. And I'm so excited to hear him uh, on Sunday. So if you want to come apart... Now, if you want to come out there and, and worship with us, you are welcome to. You are welcome to you Sunday this Sunday at 12 noon at the Double Tree Hotel on Airport Thruway. Amen. 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 Once again, I want to thank you all. Thank my partners in the building with us tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. Y'all are doing amazing things. We are growing and we have, we have two brand new partners in the room with us tonight. Yes. Yes, yes, Faith and Ron Williams. Yes, newlyweds, newlyweds. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> amen, that's why I love right there. I love it. I love it. Young married couples, amen. Amen, amen. Well, we love y'all. I don't want to keep you too much longer. My name is Pastor Desmond Peacock. This is the Excelling Church Georgia campus where your life gets better from here. We love y'all so much. Take care.